bakers and bakerettes. How are you today? I hope you're having a wonderful day as I am. Today uh, I'm going to bake a cream cheese chocolate chip cake. And to that I'm going to add some chopped walnuts and also I'm going to drizzle caramel on the top. Um, this cake kind of reminds me of the earthquake cake, but it's not the earthquake cake. Right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I showed you all the ingredients in the introduction, and I've already pre-measured everything. So as far as the dry ingredients, we're going to need three cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder. No, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of baking soda. Baking soda for this one. Also, if you want to use salt, you can add one teaspoon of salt. You're going to need two cups of white granulated sugar and a half a cup of cocoa, cocoa of your choice. All right, now to the all-purpose flour, I, I added the baking um, soda, and you can also add your salt, and I sifted it into the pan. I whisked the sugar in once I added the two cups. And then I added the half a cup of cocoa to my sifter and I sifted it in as well because I wanted it to be as fine as the flour. And then I whisked everything together to make sure that I got an even distribution of all of my dry ingredients, uh, which is what you have in this bowl, all right? Now the next step is to um, prepare in my mixing bowl. As you can see, you're gonna need at least three bowls. You need one for the wet ingredients, one for the dry ingredients, and then of course, one for the cream cheese uh, mix. So to my mixing bowl, I'm going to add two cups of water, and this is room temperature water. And of course, I don't use tap water, I'm using um, bottled water. But if you have don't have bottled water, you can always use tap water, that's fine. So you're gonna need um, two cups of water, then you're gonna add two third cups of a natural or a neutral oil, um, such as vegetable oil, canola oil. I'm using um, vegetable oil. And you know oil and water don't mix, we know that, okay? Um, these are just all the wet ingredients and we're combining them together. And then you're gonna add your uh, vanilla extract. And you're gonna need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And I'll just put this back here because I'm going to need that for the cream cheese. Okay, to, um, to this I'm just going to slowly uh, mix it just to get it somewhat introduced because oil and water, as you know, water is polar, oil is non-polar, so they're not going to mix. And you can't force them to mix. I just want to dry my mixing cup, my measuring cup. Now to the wet ingredient, I'm going to slowly add uh, my dry ingredients. I'm just going to put it on stir and just allow it to stir. And you're going to add this until your uh, mixture becomes smooth. Now, if you prefer to use self-rising flour and not have to mix all of these, the salt and the um, baking um, soda together, you can. That's a personal preference. You can also, instead of using all-purpose flour, you can use um, cake flour. Just make sure that you add the baking um, soda and optional if you wanted to add the salt. I'm 
just stirring it in. I'm gonna mix it all in just a minute. chocolate cake recipe that you like you can also um, use that recipe for the base so I think I have all of the dry ingredients a little bit left in my measuring cup here As usual, I will scrape down the sides of the pan and I'm going to fold from the bottom to the top just to make sure nothing is clinging and that everything gets well incorporated together to make a uniform uh, mixture. oil, water, and then you combine your dry ingredients and then fold them into your, uh, or introduce them and then mix them into the, uh, the wet ingredients. Okay, everything seems to be off of the bottom and off of the sides. I don't see any clumps or anything coming up. Everything seems to be mixing. So I'll give it a really good mix and then we'll be ready to transfer it to our Baking pan. So this cake can be baked in any style that you would like. So we'll take it off, make sure that you get everything off of your, your beater. And let's mess the clean up, right? And then you're going to transfer it to your well-greased baking pan. And as I said, this is a nine by 13. Releasing everything from the sides and from the bottom of your mixing bowl. Okay. 
place this in my sink to wash. Now I'm going to set my oven temperature to 375 because I want a preheated oven. All right, so that's 375. So I'm going to set my mixture here. Now this is where I'm going to add my, my walnuts to my brownies. I didn't do it in the mixing bowl. I'm just going to take them and I'm going to sprinkle them. I don't want a lot. Roughly about, I would say about a, a third or fourth or a third of a cup, depending on, and you can use any nut that you would like. If you would like to use pecans, you may use pecans. Um, if you would like to use almonds, you may use almonds. Um, I just modified this recipe and I um, originally, the original didn't have nuts, but anytime I have chocolate and it looks like a brownie, I usually add uh, a nut to it. And I just take it and again, I just go back and forth just to get it incorporated into the dough. I don't want them to like really be on the bottom. Um, and I really don't want a lot, a lot of nuts in it, but I do want the, um, the added texture that the nuts give it. And again, this is a preference. If you have a nut allergy, uh, please omit the nuts. But again, this is just something that I have added to the recipe. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the cream cheese icing. Let me press you on a brief pause while I clean, it, clean my blender. Okay, everyone, I pulled out my handheld blender um, for the cream cheese. So you're gonna need one eight ounce block of Philadelphia cream cheese, and you need to allow it to come to room temperature. you're going to add your um, your sugar. You're going to need one third cup of white granulated sugar. Okay. You're going to need to add one egg at room temperature. And you're also going to have to add your vanilla extract and you need one eighth of a teaspoon. So then you're going to take the blender and you're just going to mix it. What we want to do is cream the sugar, the blue deputy cream cheese, the egg with the vanilla extract.
And as you can see, I have creamed my cream cheese and my sugar, the one egg and the vanilla extract. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take this and it's really, 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 really creamy. And you're gonna place this like in dollops on top of your um, chocolate cake. I usually put like a dollop in the corners and just to make sure my corners get um, the cream cheese as well. Uh, one dollop in the center. I kind of like evenly distributed. It's kind of hard. And now you can add your uh, chocolate chips to this uh, cream cheese mixture, but I'm going to actually put the chocolate chips on top because I'm adding um, two different chocolate chips. I'm going to add the chocolate, which is a semi-sweet, and I'm also going to add um, some white. And you need a 12 ounce bag of chocolate chips. So you just take the cream cheese and you just place dollops on top of your cake mixture. If you would like to, you can also take um, a kebab stick or the handle of your spatula or a spoon or one of your cake icing tops and you can make this a marble by simply just swirling it in to include the uh, cream cheese within the cake. And I think that's what they do when they, the earthquake cake is kind of like that. It has the um, cream cheese kind of like a marble swirl. But I put mine, I'm gonna put mine on top and kind of give it another layer. And if you like to add more cream cheese, you can. I think the one eight ounce pack is enough um, for this one cake. But if you like cream cheese and you would like to add more, um, you just double the, the recipe. Okay, and then I just take it and just kind of take the end of the spatula without getting it all mixed into the chocolate, which when it bakes, you know, it's gonna be consumed anyway. It'll be part of it. And I just kind of spread it out just to make sure that every slice gets some cream cheese. Really easy. Easy peasy. Creamy cheesy. This is a Chocoholic's favorite cake. It is, I call it the Sinful Chocoholic Cream Cheese Chocolate Chip Walnut Cake. Because I added the walnuts <laughs> for my, for my uh, delight. All right. So we have our cream cheese add it, spread it evenly across the top. You know as bakers you try to be per perfection is something you you strive on, especially when you want to beautify it. But we are we all know no matter what you do, it's going to bake the way it bakes. Uh, and you just accept it because you know it's still going to be good. All right, so there we have it. There's a little more cheese, cream cheese to add. Mm -hmm. The more the better. I thought I scraped the sides down. Obviously not. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like, as you can see. Right. Now I'm going to add my um, Ghirardelli, and these are the premium bacon grand chips. These are the semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm going to add these um, to the top, and you just take them however you would like to and you just sprinkle them across the top. As I said, this is a, a Chocoholic's favorite or favorite, however you want to say it, favorite cake. And you will need a six time, six, six, uh, excuse me, a 12 ounce bag of the um, chocolate chips. This was a 
It came over the reason bag here. This is, yeah. Made like a, a 12 ounce. Okay. Uh, no special way to add your chips. You just spread them out how you would like. Now, I'm going to also add, because I like white chocolate, I'm going to also add um, about a handful of the Gerardelli Premium Bacon Classic White um, Chips. Cream cheese and white chips with chocolate chips. Oh my. And the original recipe did not call for the white chips. It just calls for the chocolate. I just decided that I wanted to add the white chips. You can never have too much ooey gooeyness. So now we're ready to place it in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to allow it to bake for uh, between 30 and 35 minutes. Again, the temperature depends on your oven and um, I would say after about 30 minutes, check it. Um, if it's not done, you'll add about five minutes to the bake time, check it. Um, it may take 40 to 45 minutes in your oven, who knows. Um, but you know that um, we always check just to make sure. And you can just do the poke test using a toothpick, using a, a fork, using a kebab stick, um, just to see if it comes out clean, okay? All right, so now uh, I will say for this, if you can make it a rocky road as well, um, because you can also throw some marshmallows on here. Um, I guess maybe when you take when you check it to see if it's done, you can add about another two to three minutes by just throwing some marshmallows on top of it and let them kind of uh, melt and call it a rocky road. Um, cream cheese, chocolate chip, um, cake. I added the walnuts and the white chocolate chips as I said. The original recipe didn't call for those. And you can um, dress it up or dress it down however you like. Um, you can add pecans, almonds, macadamia nuts. Um, you can add some fruit if you wanted to, some strawberries to the cake. You, you know, there's just a lot of things that you can do. You can add some strawberries or blueberries to the cream cheese um, and change it and take off the chocolate chips and then make it a strawberry um, cream cheese um, cake, chocolate cake. Um, so there are a lot of different things you can do to play around with it. As you know, I always give you uh, options. All right, so now I'm going to um, place the cake in the oven. Now that my oven is, is ready, 375 for 30 to 35 minutes. I am going to place it on the lower rack, which is the bottom, center of your oven, which is the, of course, the hottest part of the oven. I will check it at 30 minutes. And when it's time to remove it from the oven, I will pick you guys back up because I'm about to place you on a brief pause so that I can um, do some housekeeping here so I can clean up all the things that I use to bake the cake. So hang tight and I'll be right back with you. Hello everyone. Uh, I checked the cake after 30 minutes and I had to place it back in the oven. So this is after exactly 35 minutes. This is what it looks like. As you can see, it's very beautiful. Um, it's too hot to cut. So I'm going to let it cool and then I'll slice it and I'll place an image of it. I'm actually not going to eat it right now. I'm going to um, prepare dinner and I'm going to have this and I will um, slice it and I'll place um, a picture of it on the community page for you guys to see. Um, thanks for coming along with me on this bake. Um, if you are a subscriber, I would like to take this opportunity to just say thank you. If you strolled by or just drifted in and uh, something caught your eye thank you for stopping by and i hope you'll consider subscribing um, if you have a comment please leave a comment in the comment section below make sure it's positive um, on this channel we share and we spread positive vibes only um, if you have a recipe you'd like me to try please share it if you have tried one of my recipes and it turned out for you or you modified one, please share that with us uh, in the comments and also send, email me a picture at Cassie's Kitchen Creations and I will um, post uh, a picture of it on our community page. So again, thank you again for joining me on this bake and remember to stay positive, stay focused, motivate someone, inspire someone, encourage others, um, spread positive vibes um, because your positivity may be the only positivity that someone sees in a day. Um, stay blessed, um, stay prayed up, 
pray for yourself and for others. Uh, please pray for those in Florida who went through the hurricane this week. Um, we hope that um, everyone will have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see you guys on the next day. Possibly prep. Maybe even a no-bake. Have a good one, guys. Stay blessed.